be seated. So I gave you a warning <laughs> about the newspaper. I'm going to start this morning with uh, several examples from our times as a contrast to the work of the Spirit, especially on that first uh, Pentecost. So I start with a voice from this world, kind of against kind of against the voice from Jesus' gospel and good news. The example that I use this morning are a matter of public record, all of them. You can look them up online, find them on TV, on Twitter or X, or even on Truth Social. You can even find them in newspapers, <laughs> if you're a throwback like me who still gets a newspaper. Why start this way? Well, last week, Pastor Tom talked about the world in two ways. The world that's so great that God has created, and then the world that pushes back against the gospel. I think it's one of those times, serious times, call for serious sermons, a growing culture of de uh, deception, I think, must be challenged by God's truth. So, I'm speaking less of a person and more of a voice in this world. But here goes. For the last nine public years, this certain person's voice has been loudly focused on walls, literal walls on the southern border, even wants to build a wall now on the northern border to keep out the rowdy Canadians, forgetting that they only cross the border to shop and not to fight, right? <laughs> this one individual voice spends waking moments into the late night focused also on building up walls between people, groups of people. His supporters are encouraged to fight just about anybody. He pushes white male legislators against just about every woman's basic rights. He supports evangelicals' narrow beliefs and has a voice that denigrates just about every other faith, right? So here's the thing. If an issue can divide us, this strong voice seems to be for it and is often behind it. He sees refugees as dangerous people who speak languages that nobody speaks anymore. Now you figure out the logic of that. I can't. He says he wants walls with razor wire, moats with alligators, fences that electrocute, soldiers with permission to shoot non-white border crossers. He's for law and order for his detractors and immunity for himself. This person seems to lean into whatever builds animosity and division and fear because he really likes walls. That's the voice of the world. So here's where all those challenging messages connect, I think, with today's Pentecost lessons. I think this person has never read the Pentecost story, never been acquainted, acquainted with God's intent to tear down walls and build bridges. You see, I think Pentecost reveals a God who builds bridges between people of every nation, people of any language, bridges between people of different faiths, different colors, different status, where this one person seems to see only white, only Christian, Jesus invites him and us to see a rainbow of colors, to hear a symphony of languages, to embrace a witness of the insights from other faiths' perspective. It's sad to say that he and his followers lean into apocalypse and fear and intimidation language, they seem to me to be drunk on hate's power. But glad to say, this morning in particular, that Jesus and Jesus' followers focus on the language of hope and welcome as the Spirit promises to pour out new life. They're drunk on a different kind of power. And I think the contrast between the worldview on this hand and Jesus' world can hardly be any more stark or instructive. 
Pentecost, I think, makes that clear for us all. Acts 2 says that on that very first new Pentecost celebration, the risen Jesus comes into this world again through the Holy Spirit in a powerful, amazing, life-giving way. That Jesus' Spirit is poured out on people from all over the world. Well, at least the Middle East world. Luke, in that list of names I didn't include in the reading, <laughs> lists groups of people that no longer even existed. As if God's reach knows no limit on time or space. Peter stands and proclaims the resurrection, life, and death of Christ and says that's all made all the difference in all the world for all the world. The disciples' words that day and their witness are understood by each unique, different person. And the Spirit that day brings home the true, deep meaning of peace and welcome and forgiveness and hope in Jesus Christ. The day of God's Spirit is so dramatic, so amazing, so unheard of, that the disciples, as you heard, are accused of being drunk at 9 o'clock in the morning. Maybe if it came back at 5, it would be a different thing. But the thing is, they were drunk. They were drunk on God's gracious, life-giving spirit. They were drunk on love and not hate. God declares, I will pour out my spirit on everyone, and then everyone of every color, every nation, every language, everywhere who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Not might be, not could be, but shall be saved, be made whole, be restored to shalom life. I think that's a message of healing for those on the left, the center, the right, and these days especially for those on the far right because love beats hate. Jesus' spirit is poured out, the poured out source of strength and courage for anyone, everyone, all of us to carry out the mission of Christ. His spirit gives us strength to proclaim forgiveness of brokenness and sin, strength to embrace all people in loving, serving arms, and gives us the courage to speak the truth. We gather this day on Pentecost because Pentecost celebrates our mission now as Jesus' followers. It calls for us all to spend our days building bridges rather than walls that divide, to face the truth, and tell the truth to a broken world. It said people from everywhere gathered in Jerusalem on that day, that season, that week, for the life-giving wheat harvest of Pentecost because a good harvest means bread and food for everyone. And then suddenly the spirit of Jesus Christ comes upon the disciples like a mighty wind poured out like flames, tongues of fire on every disciple. It's not about glossolalia, that ecstatic speech that needs an interpreter. Pentecost is about a miracle of the ear, the miracle of being able to hear of God's grace in one's own language. The picture I have is of the United Nations, every representative of every nation sitting there gathered, but this time not needing headphones to comprehend what's being said. Pentecost shows the universal nature of God's love and God's invitation, and it says love and grace and forgiveness of all, and all means all, right? The disciples that day rushed to tell the story of Jesus. So must we, because our nation and our communities and our families are being pulled apart by voices that seek to divide us walling us off from one another. You know this is true. And you know this. The gospel tears down walls and fences. The gospel is a bridge to neighbors, to community, and never hates bridge to nowhere. Luke says thousands heard that good news and came to faith, came to trust the words of the disciples, but also the promises of God says thousands were baptized in Jesus' name, filled with the Spirit and fire for a witness. 
It says that day walls were torn down and a bridge was built as diverse communities are embraced by Jesus Christ. But here's the not so good news in the good news story. And this story is clear. Not everyone came across that bridge. Not then, not now. Because the outpouring of God's spirit of inclusion also draws the anger of voices and hearts, like this particular person and his followers, who choose ways hostile to God's ways and who still prefer to build bridges or build walls rather than bridges. To this day, Pentecost's dramatic message still falls on deaf ears and angry hearts. There are still powers that boldly, loudly betray the gospel. Selling Bibles they must not have read won't give them a victory over the gospel news because, this is a tough line, because Jesus Christ is every generation's anti-Trump because God's love defeats every hate. So for us, every single day, our hope in Jesus' promise is this. The Spirit's power given out at Pentecost will gift each of us the strength to witness to God's good love towards all. Will gift us the wisdom and passion to confront and challenge and defeat everything and everyone whose voice is hostile to God's inclusive grace and welcoming arms. If I read from the public record, of that individual, let this be our public record. Bridges, 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 never walls, not ever walls. Then, centered in God's word and ways, we must and we will give witness to the truth and nothing but the truth, so help us God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The peace of God which passes our divisions. <laughs> Keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen.